One of the things we love most about Nmap is the fact that it works for both TCP and UDP protocols. And while most services run on TCP, you can always get a great advantage by scanning UDP based services. This is a graphical representation of the various types of scans and the categories they fit in. We will explore them in the next slide. TCP scan. Um, this scan is generally used to check and complete what's known as the freeway handshake between you and the chosen target system. The downside is that this scan is likely to expose your IP address if you are the sender. And uh, you can actually see that it's subdivided into three different types of scans, stealth, connect, and idle scans. We're going to be looking into the stealth, the stealth scan first. Attacker use this scanning technique to bypass firewall rules and logging mechanism. As you can actually see also, this scan subdivides further into three scans, half open scans, the act flag scan, and inverse flag scans. The next scan we're going to be looking into is the half open scan. Scene scan. This command will initiate a TCP scene scan against the target host and wait for a response. The response determines the availability of the port. If it receives enough packet back, this indicates the port is open. If the reset packets receive, this indicates that the port is closed. The scene scan is initiated using the following command. This command requires root privileges. So this is the output of the half open scan, also known as a scene scan. Um, our next scan will be the act scan. Act scan are used to determine whether a particular port is filtered or not. This can prove to be extremely helpful when trying to probe for firewalls and the resisting set of rules. Um, simple packet filtering firewalls will allow packets with the act big set. Therefore, hackers tend to send uh, an act probe packet with random sequence number and they judge it in the following way. If a reset response is received, this indicates that the port is not filtered and a no response suggests that the port is filtered, possibly by a stateful firewall. An act scan is initiated using the following command. Okay, so I mean, uh, it does suggest that all the ports are unfiltered, which means that the port, the target ports are reachable, but Nmap cannot determine if the closed are open. The next scan is the Christmas scan. And uh, it, this is an inverse scan, and it's a subcategory in the stealth scanning techniques. Christmas scan are used to manipulate the push, urge, and fin flags that can be found in a TCP header, lighting up the packet like a Christmas tree, no pun intended. They're very stealthy in nature. Computers running Windows will not respond to Christmas scan due to the way the TCP stack is implemented. And um, stateful firewall are likely to detect it if they're configured properly, whereas stateless firewall will not be able to. The Christmas scan is initiated using the following Nmap command. Okay, so it does suggest that the port state is open filtered, which means that Nmap cannot determine if the target port is open filtered. Um, and next scan will be the fin scan. Um, also very stealthy in nature, just like the scene scan, but it sends a TCP fin packet instead. Uh, most but not all computers will send the reset packets when they get this, um, this kind of request. So the fin scan can show quite a lot of false positive and negative. Um, the good thing about it, as a, any sort of stealth scan, it, it can get easily get it under the radar of some ideas and other countermeasures. The fin scan is initiated using the following Nmap command. Well, it does suggest that um, the ports that are open filtered and um, pretty much the same output as the previous one. So our next scan will be the null scan. The null scan, they're very, very, very stealthy. And um, as the name suggests, they set all the heavy fields to null. Generally, this is not a valid packet. And a few target will not know how to deal with such uh, with, with a packet like this. So scanning some version of Windows with not packet might end up producing very unreliable results. Um, this is something that you have to bear in mind. Um, it tends to be more effective to 
to use on system not, win not running Windows. Um, this scan is initiated using the following commands. Again, the, the output is the same as the previous one. Um, all right, so we move on to the next scan, which is TCP Connect. That's the full open scan. Um, this scan is the default TCP scan when the SYN scan is not an option. Um, it tells you if a port is open after completing the freeway handshake and uh, you use a reset packet to close the connection. It doesn't require uh, super user privilege as, the, as all the scans that we've seen so far. Target system are more likely to log a full TCP connection. So are intrusion, intrusion detection systems. Um, if they particularly notice a, a large number of connections coming from the same host. Um, the connect scan is initiated using the following commands. There you go. As I say, it doesn't require any root privileges. It's very, very quick. And that lasts essentially one minute. Well, the next scan is, is the IDO scan, also known as IP, IPID scan. This is the stealthiest of all scans as the packet to ban stuff in external host, uh, an external host. This could be a proxy or a zombie machine. Essentially, it works like this. An attacker sends one SYN packet to the target and two SYN ACK packets to the external host and will then use the external host IPID to determine if the port is open or closed. Um, it's quite controversial. Um, some people have questioned why MAP has it built into it because it only has one purpose, the malicious attacks. Um, one of the important conditions, however, is that the external host should be silent inside the network. So Linux system are perfect candidate for zombie host because they don't make any noise in the network, whereas Windows machine tend to talk NetBIOS and Mac system, they tend to talk multicast DNS. And um, an ID scan is initiated using the following commands. Uh, I think I ran it earlier because it takes a bit of time. So you can actually see that the zombie, uh, uh, the, the zombie IP address is my Windows Windows 10 machine here, uh, the IP address. So it, it redirects um, all the requests by that machine, hiding my IP address as, as, as a result. So yeah, it took a while, but in this case, it took only about six seconds. So um, the next scan, um, it's a, it's a UDP scan. Um, unlike TCP, UDP does not use the freeway handshake, so there's always a chance for a false positive in the scan results. Um, thing about UDP is it's a connectionless protocol. So program that use UDP just send the data. It doesn't have any error checking, but tend to be faster. So that's why things like live streaming, online video games tend to use it for this reason. Um, UDP scan I use obviously to check whether there's a UDP port listening for incoming requests. But the good thing about UDP scan also is that it can reveal uh, Trojan horses that might be running on UDP ports or even reveal some hidden RPC services. On the other hand, um, it can be quite slow because systems tend to slow down their responses to this kind of traffic as a precautionary measure. You can tell if the port is open if you get no response and it's a close if the system responds with a uh, port unreachable. Uh, a scan is initiated using the following command. I think I ran it earlier, it might still be running. Oh, okay, that's all right. So that's the command that you have got to enter. You can actually see it took a thousand seconds. So that's quite a long time. 